Hey guys, welcome back to Photography for the Rest of Us, a place for people who just love the art of photography. My name again is Carrie, and today is week one, day one of our Learn Photo Challenge. All right guys, I am so excited about this. It is week one, day one. So week one means we are focusing on aperture, which really means we're focusing on depth of field, right? So we're going to understand and get a little bit more in depth on how aperture works and affects the images. Um, if you typically shoot, say wide open at like 1.4, maybe this is a week where you try some images at F9 and see if you can get some really cool stuff. Um, it depends on the prompt and it's totally up to you, but I really, really encourage you to push yourself, okay? So without further ado, day one's prompt is, that was terrible. Can you tell I'm not a drummer? Day one's prompt is silhouette. So silhouettes, awesome, fun, exciting. If you already know what you wanna do and you've already hit the like button and the subscribe button, then have at it. Don't forget to hashtag your images, hashtag learn photo challenge and hashtag photos for the rest of us on Instagram so that I can find them and they can be in a video at the end of the week. Um, and promote your social handle and show everybody what you've been up to. Uh, and if you are in the learn group, make sure to put the images on the thread with this specific prompt for this day. If you are like, oh, silhouettes, hmm, never done that, not sure what I wanna do, stick with me. We're gonna go through it and talk about what silhouettes are all about and some camera settings and just like how to get you started, all right? So without further ado, I've said that like four times in this video, I think already. All right, so Wikipedia says, a silhouette is an image of a person, animal, object, or scene represented as a solid shape of a single color, usually black, with its edges matching the outline of the subject. The interior of, the, of a silhouette is featureless, and the silhouette is usually presented on a light background, usually white or none at all. And, you know, when I got the prompt, because like I said, I didn't look at these beforehand either, when I got the prompt, I actually started thinking about it and I don't take traditional photography type silhouettes that often. Um, so I dug in my archives and here's a few images um, that I've taken over the years that fit into the very traditional stereotype of silhouettes with a sunrise or a sunset behind them and then a black um, subject outlined um, of some sort. So there's a fisherman and some people on a ridge and some grass and you get the idea. So that is probably typical what you see as far as silhouettes. And if that's what you wanna do for this challenge, that's awesome, have at it. There is no shame in that game, okay? Okay, so if you're a family or a wedding photographer, you might be wondering how this could maybe be a useful skill for you. Um, but I'm a really big proponent of using silhouettes to help accentuate a story and like, tell a little bit more of the feeling or the idea behind an image. So I went in and through some of my shots and I am an editorial travel photographer, which means I tell the story of locations that I go to, um, though I've worked in many other <laughs> parts, um, facets of photography, that is what I love. Um, and so I went through and I kind of found some images that I've taken and you'll see them on the screen now. Um, some images that I've taken that fit into the silhouette category, but maybe aren't as literal. Um, and what I really love about the idea of silhouettes, even if it's not the traditional um, application, is that uh, the style of silhouettes can be used to tell a story. You know, you kind of take the personalization out of something and instead you end up emphasizing the action or the feeling of a moment rather than you know, what color somebody's eyes were or who they specifically are. What are they doing? What emotion could they evoke, right? So you can see like in the picture of the painter, who he is specifically isn't necessarily part of the story in that moment, but the red mask that he was painting in Nepal was. And the size and the presence of this building inside a shrine in Japan was more what I was trying to emphasize than the actual details of the architecture. So really it's more of emphasizing a feeling or an emotion than specifically the details of the subject. And I know a lot of you are really, really all about getting crisp poppy images, 
but I want you to think about things a little bit differently this week. So I know that a lot of my examples are not portraits and I know a lot of you are portrait photographers. So I actually spent a little bit of time in my living room with my daughter. Um, you can see this fun little clip here, um, taking some photos. And I ended up with this shot, which is the cover shot of this video. And I feel like this shot is very, very simple. As you can see, I didn't even clean the dirt off of the floor from when the dogs came in from the snow. Um, it's just in my living room. It's just using the light coming in the door, but it evokes a feeling, right? You can tell she's a child. You can tell that she's just spinning and having a good time with it. Um, and a lot of times with art and photography, it's more about pushing through and showing a moment or showing an emotion than it is the actual subject. And if I had this in a lineup with other pictures of my daughter, people would understand that this was still her. Um, but this has more meaning for me. You know, it tells an emotion. It's a feeling of joy and it pushes further into the idea of art versus the idea of just clicking the button. All right, so let's move into some hands on learning. I am here in my studio, so I'm going to set it up uh, in a different way than you maybe would when you're outside, but I'm going to talk you through it. And honestly, all the steps are the same. Just some of the tools are a little bit different, um, but I am using a strobe tonight because it's my favorite tool to use. Um, but I will, I'll talk you through it. We'll get there. Let me set up the camera and I'll see you in just a second. So we are all set up in my super tiny little studio space. I didn't even put a backdrop on. That's my concrete, my unfinished basement. Um, this is super easy. So first off, if you're outside, all you have to do is have the sun behind your subject, right? And do the same steps that I'm going to go through. If you want to use a window, I would put up a curtain, um, a white curtain, probably. If you want a color, you could do that. But put up a curtain of some sort in front of the window and then position your subject in front of the window like he is sitting now. Um, this is my husband, Taylor, by the way. <laughs> um, I am going to use a strobe tonight. Uh, so my settings are a little bit different, but I'm going to start with a modeling light so I can just show you guys the steps. If I had a window down in my studio, I would show you that way, but I don't. So we work with what we got. All right. So modeling light on, and you can see in the video already that he's got like, it's fairly profiled, right? Like, but if I shoot, I'm going to set my camera totally to auto, right? And I'm going to take a shot and I want you to see what we end up with. Okay. So one, two, three. All right, and totally on auto, this is what we end up with. I mean, it's not far from a silhouette, but it's not exactly what we're going for, right? So first step is you need to be shooting on manual if you're not already. If you don't know how to shoot on manual, I have a video on that. I will put up here, um, but manual mode, please. Also, if you are shooting outside or you shooting through a window, I would like you on spot metering. Um, and I'm gonna use spot metering right here with the modeling light. So with spot metering, all you need to do is move your meter or your fo manual focus point selection point, the little dot inside your viewfinder to the brightest part of your image and expose for that. So in this case, it's going to be about there <laughs> behind him, right? Where the light is. So this is a super easy setup. Actually, Taylor, hop up for me real quick just so they can see. I just have my strobe here behind him on a stool. That's it. Okay. And it's on pretty high power for the model in light. Go ahead and have a seat. Thank you. All right. So right there. All right. I mean, that's close. We're close. We're not exactly where we want to be, but remember how I was talking about aperture. So I'm going to zoom in on this picture and show you guys that you see how his ear is in focus and the edge around his face is out of focus. That's because without me worrying about what my aperture is set and just moving my dials, I ended up at F 2.8. And part of that is that the modeling light is very, very dim, right? But the problem with shooting wide open for a silhouette is it's a very, 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 very depth, narrow depth of field, which means when we're taking a picture straight on, our eyes might be in focus, but our ears are out of focus which is all well and good, except for when you're taking a silhouette and you want that really hard line all the way around. So I have to make some manual decisions 
with my settings in order to figure out where I want to be. I will say this is easier when you're outside because you have a little more light and that's why I'm going to turn on my strobe now. So it is going to flash now. All right, so I'm going to move up all the way to, let's try F9, ISO 100 and shutter speed 125. Because I am using an off-camera flash, I do have to be under my sync speed of 250. I should, I'm shooting a Nikon today. So I know my shutter sync speed is 1 250th of a second. It might be different for your camera, so make sure you check that. All right, so let's try that. Focusing. And I'm going to focus right there on his ear again. Notice I didn't turn the lights off in the room. One, two, three. Boom! I didn't test this beforehand, you guys. <laughs> that just worked out. So I'm gonna zoom in on this one and show you guys a spot. Now, I'm sure he's gonna totally be like, ah! But you see how you can see the individual stubbles on his face from him not shaving? Really, really, really crisp. I didn't move my focal point. I still focused on his ear. So you see how having a bigger depth of field could help you in this situation? Now, there are workarounds for this problem as far as depth of field if you absolutely don't have enough light. First, up your ISO. Don't be afraid of ISO. Within reason, there's nothing wrong with having a little bit higher ISO, especially for a high contrast image like this. And two, you can actually focus right on the edge, like of where their face is and where the highest contrast spot is, and hope that you don't miss the focus and end up behind. Another reason that you might want a really big depth of field is if you are outside. Because right now, the background doesn't matter for him, right? It's just light. Whereas, if you're outside and you're taking a beautiful shot of the sunset and your lovely family holding hands, walking over a ridge, right? You want them in sharp focus, but you also want the clouds and the grass in focus because that's part of what makes the silhouette look so good. If everything's kind of blurry and out of focus, it just doesn't have that crisp, nice look that a silhouette tends to have. So if you're going for a more traditional style silhouette, I do recommend you having a bigger depth of field so that everything is nice and crisp and sharp. All right guys, real quick review because I know I ramble sometimes. Silhouettes, a dark shadowy outline of your subject in your image with a bright background. Typically without any features, but we like a little artistic license, so maybe a few features, right? When you are shooting outside or with a constant light source like a window or an LED light or a softbox, then you want to use spot metering. You expose for the brightest element in the image and then let the subject fall into darkness. If you are using an off-camera flash, either a speed light or a strobe, just turn it on really high power and either shoot it through a sheet or a curtain or I just bounced mine off the back wall because I knew it was high enough power that it would just be white. So um, off camera flash. Also keep in mind that our focus this week is aperture. So a little bit bigger aperture is gonna make you more successful with silhouettes and it's gonna give you that crisper outline that you're looking for, all right? And last but not least, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Like me and Anna on Instagram because we post cool pictures and we're fun, nice people. Um, don't forget to post your images on Instagram and use the hashtag, 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 learn photo challenge and hashtag photos for the rest of us. And then we have a new video coming out tomorrow. Um, I'm not going to tell you what it is now, but I am super excited about it and I got the whole family involved. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Don't forget to post on the learn thread as well if you are in that Facebook group. And uh, 